people very commonly ask me questions like what is the best pet reptile or if I'm getting my first pet reptile what should I get what reptile do you recommend for a first pet I want to get a reptile but I don't really know what I should get what should I get what's your favorite type of whatever I don't know I get so many questions just asking kind of what my top recommendations would be what I personally think is the best pet reptile so let's talk about that a little bit today I'm finally here to answer a question that so many people come to me and ask me about I am going to be telling you what I personally think is one of the best pet reptiles the animal that we are going to be talking about today is the crested gecko Now I'm sure that this is an animal that many of you guys are familiar with already. Some of you may not be if you're entirely new to reptiles, I don't know. However, we're gonna be talking about crested geckos today and why I personally consider them to be one of the best pet reptiles. Before we go ahead and talk about crested geckos and get really far into this video though, I do want to put a little disclaimer here and say a few things first. Basically, all I wanna say is even though I'm talking about crested geckos and saying that I personally would consider them to be a good pet reptile it is so important to research an animal before you get it and make sure that it is the right fit for you because just because a crested gecko is a good pet for me and maybe many others it doesn't mean it's a good pet for you so just because I'm saying that a crested gecko makes a good pet reptile for most people please keep in mind that that is not a 100% guaranteed situation so please just make sure to do your research and make sure that this is a pet that will fit your life style before you commit to getting one. Don't just get one because I said it was a good pet because like I said, a good pet for me isn't always a good pet for everyone else. All of that said, let's go ahead and start talking about crested geckos. So first off, what is a crested gecko? This little dude right here, if we can get the camera to focus on him, there we go. This little guy right here is named Oliver and he is one of my crested geckos. I personally do have two, Dorito is my other one and this one here is Oliver. So crested geckos are a reptile, they are a type of lizard, more specifically they are a type of gecko. This type of gecko comes from New Caledonia, that is the only place in the world where you will find them in the wild, however they are very commonly bred in captivity for the pet trade. Crested geckos are very commonly kept as pets in the reptile world and I would personally say for a good reason. Anytime someone comes to me and is asking about good beginner reptiles, maybe they're telling me they want to get into reptiles, maybe they're not sure where to start, they know they want a pet reptile but they're not super familiar with reptiles yet so they're looking to get advice from someone who is a little bit more experienced than them. So let's talk about crested geckos as pets. Now one of the reasons why I think crested geckos can make really good pet reptiles or pet lizards, especially for beginners, is their size. You guys can see Oliver here right on my hand and you guys can see he is pretty small. Reptiles can sometimes be intimidating to people, I totally get it, and especially bigger reptiles. Bigger reptiles can be intimidating to a lot of people. Crested geckos, however, not super intimidating animals to most people. Not only is their size good because they're not intimidating, but it's also a very, very manageable size. When getting a pet reptile, size is definitely something to keep in mind because there are some really big reptiles out there and the bigger the reptile, the bigger the enclosure it's going to need, it's probably going to eat more, it's probably just going to need more work to maintain it, where smaller things can sometimes be a lot more manageable. For for example, if you have a crested gecko here and you need to buy an enclosure for it, it is super easy to really go to any pet store and find something that will work. Whereas, for example, if you get a big tegu and you need a giant enclosure for it, you're probably going to have to build something yourself or get something custom made. So their size is definitely a bonus. So their small size is definitely a bonus in my opinion, especially if you're new to reptiles and you do want something that is very managed. A crested gecko is a really good option for that. So since we were just talking about enclosures, let's look at that subject a little bit more. Creating an appropriate 
appropriate setup for a crested gecko can be extremely fun, it can be extremely simple, it can be very rewarding, and it can be very cost efficient. One of the things I really like about crested geckos and caring for them in captivity is that they do well in a huge variety of setups. So if you're someone who really, really likes going full out and building beautiful bioactive setups, crested gecko is great for that. However, if you're also someone who is new to reptiles, you don't really have experience building enclosures and stuff. It is also super easy to make an appropriate crested gecko setup, even if you don't have a ton of reptile experience. So crested geckos are arboreal, which means they spend most of their times in the trees, climbing on branches and leaves and vines and stuff. They don't spend a ton of time on the ground. Because of that, if you are getting a crested gecko, you are going to want an enclosure for the gecko that is taller rather than wide usually. As of right now, the current accepted minimum for a crested gecko is usually somewhere around a 20 gallon enclosure turned on its side or something like an 18 by 18 by 24 exoterra. I personally have used both of these enclosures. I used to use a 20 gallon long turned on its side. Dorito, my crested gecko, used to live in that. He now lives in an 18 by 18 by 24 exoterra. My crested gecko, Dorito, used to live in a 20 gallon long enclosure but he now lives in an 18 by 18 by 24 exoterra. An enclosure for a crested gecko though doesn't have to be anything really fancy or really expensive. Bin setups can work amazing for them. I personally have never used a bin setup for a crested gecko. However, I have used bin setups for gargoyle geckos, which are very, very similar to crested geckos, and they worked great. And I know people who use bins full time for their crested geckos and have success with them. So there are a lot of options when it comes to creating an appropriate enclosure for your crested gecko. Like I mentioned earlier, if you're someone who likes going full out and building these extravagant, beautiful, bioactive enclosures, Crested geckos are great for those. Crested geckos do awesome in enclosures like that. However, if you're someone who maybe isn't as experienced, you're new to this, you want to go for something a little bit more simple, maybe you're on a budget, no matter what, it is very easy to create an efficient crested gecko enclosure regardless of what your budget is, regardless of what your experience level is and your skill level. That is something I definitely think is super cool about crested geckos, and it really does help make them a good pet for a wide variety of people. As I mentioned earlier, crested geckos do spend most of their time up in the trees, on branches, and in vines. Because of this, they do like to climb a lot. So these guys aren't really a gecko that spends a lot of time on the ground. They do like to climb on branches and things. Because of that, when you are setting up a crested gecko enclosure, you do want to fill the enclosure with plants plants and branches and vines and stuff. However, this is not a full care video or anything. This is just kind of talking about some of the reasons why I think they are good pets. So if you do want to learn more about them, please do more research. But anyways, let's get back on topic. So because crested geckos aren't very big and can live in things like a 20 gallon long enclosure or an 18 by 18 by 24 exoterra or an appropriately sized plastic bin, it is super easy to find enclosures for them. Things like these tanks and plastic bins are super available at pet stores, even Walmart sells bins and things like that. So it is really easy to find the supplies that you need for a crested gecko in most places. So that is another reason why I think they are good pets for people is they are fairly accessible for most people. So now let's talk about their diet. Crested geckos have a diet that is fairly manageable for most people. In captivity, crested geckos are usually eating some sort of formula, which is usually like a powder that you mix with water, and it contains typically everything they need. They are considered to be complete diets. However, I do think it's important to give crested geckos insects on top of the powder mix. Some people say you don't need to, and while I agree you don't technically need to for your gecko to live a healthy life. I do think it is very enriching for them, it is very natural for them, they do enjoy it a lot of them, so I definitely do think you should be offering your crested gecko insects on top of the powder mix. However, since the powder mix is the primary part of their diet, it does make things fairly easy. So these mixes typically look something like this, depending on what brand you buy, obviously the packaging would be different, but they are all relatively the same, where it is just some sort of powder that you mix with water, and then the geckos 
can lick it up. So these gecko diets are also fairly easy to find. Like I was saying about the enclosures, a lot of supplies that you need for crested geckos are very easily accessible to a lot of people. You can order things like these online if stores near you don't stock them. I know for sure if you are in the US or Canada, it'll be super easy for you to find stuff like Pangea. If you are outside of the US or Canada, I'm not too sure unfortunately. So feeding them is pretty simple. As I mentioned earlier, you really just take those powder mixes, you mix it with water, you give them some insects sometimes. A lot of people do say that crested geckos are good reptiles for someone who doesn't want to deal with live insects. Because while these crested geckos can eat those powdered formulas and they can live a healthy life on it, I do personally think they should be offered insects. So if you are someone who absolutely does not want live insects in your house, I personally wouldn't recommend a crested gecko just because I do think they should have the opportunity to eat insects if they want to. But that is just my personal opinion and obviously you can make your own decisions. Oliver here will not eat insects. Dorito, my other crested gecko, he will eat them no problem. Oliver does not care about them. He has no interest in them. He never wants to eat them. So he doesn't eat them. And I know he'll still be healthy because the food he eats is a complete formula, but I do still like to give them that option. So now let's talk about the cost of a crested gecko. As cost usually plays a factor in people's decision making. So the initial cost of getting any pet is usually going to be more expensive than the ongoing cost. The initial cost of getting a crested gecko is likely going to cost a couple hundred dollars. Again, it really depends on what you do because you can go really full out and make a big bioactive setup or you can go more simplistic and create a more simple tub setup or something like that. So the cost really does vary. With that said, let's just go ahead and break it down a little bit very briefly. Crested geckos themselves are usually not that expensive unless you're getting a more expensive morph, for example, like a lily white. However, if you don't really care about the morph and you just want a gecko to have as a pet, you can definitely get crested geckos for quite cheap. I've definitely seen crested geckos for $20, $30 if they're just a very basic morph gecko, but then of course they do get more and more expensive based on their appearances. So really you could be getting a gecko anywhere from like $30 to thousands of dollars. However, I assume that most people watching this video will likely be getting a gecko in the like $30 to $200 range. Then you have to think about the cost of their enclosure. So if you're going with something like a glass exoterra, those can be fairly expensive, $100, $200 depending on the size. If you're going with something like a 20 gallon long, aquarium. Those are usually a bit cheaper than exoterras, but still usually fairly expensive. The most cost effective option would probably be a appropriately sized bin. Those are only going to cost you around $10. And then you have to think about the things to go inside of the enclosure. So things like branches and vines and leaves. Those can definitely cost you anywhere 10, 30, 40, 50 plus dollars. Again, it totally depends if you're going like fake plants versus live plants and things like that. So depending Depending on how you do things, I would say the initial startup cost of getting a crested gecko for most people would be anywhere between $100 and like $400, I would say. Then you have to think about the ongoing cost. Now thankfully, crested geckos tend to have a fairly low ongoing cost. So ongoing costs are things that you're going to have to continue to buy for this gecko throughout its whole life. So food, for example, um, water conditioner, substrate to clean it and stuff like that. Like I said, crested geckos are not super expensive animals. Something like this bag of food usually costs somewhere around $18. I'm not sure of the exact price, but I think they're around $18. One bag of food like this would last one gecko months. Then the cost of live insects such as crickets are quite, quite low. If you're only feeding your gecko insects maybe once a week, that's really probably only going to cost you 50 cents per week maybe. And then you will also have to buy things like substrate to do substrate changes and things like that. However, like I said, the ongoing cost of a crested gecko is quite, quite low. Now the one cost though that I didn't mention was vet bills. Because while crested geckos do have a fairly low ongoing cost, there is always the possibility that your animal is going to need vet care. All animals, including reptiles, can require vet care. I've had multiple of my reptiles need vet care, so don't think that just because you're getting a lizard, it's not going to need the vet, because it can. If you're getting an animal, it's super important that you have 
vet funds. I'm not including vet bills as an ongoing cost because there is no way to know if you are even going to have them at all, if you're going to have a lot of them or anything like that. So all I want to say is just be prepared for vet bills. Even though these guys do have a low ongoing cost, don't forget that they may need to see the vet at some point. Now let's talk about Crested Gecko's lighting requirements. This is another reason why I think they make such good pets for really anyone especially beginners though. And that is because these guys have really no special lighting requirements. Now that doesn't mean you can't still give it to them. I personally give UVB to both of my Crested Geckos. However, they do not need it to survive. So Crested Geckos don't really need any special lighting like UVB and normally they don't really need any heat lamps either. So for most people, Crested Geckos do not require any lighting. And again, that just makes them a lot simpler, it makes it very manageable, especially for someone who is new to reptiles. It makes getting into it a lot easier to understand when there's not all these things being thrown at you at once. So now let's talk about their temperature requirements. Reptiles are cold-blooded animals, so they cannot regulate their own body temperature. Because of that, they need to rely on external heat sources in order to regulate their temperature. So if you are going to be getting a pet crested gecko, or really any reptile in general, it's important that you keep that in mind. However, crested geckos tend to be fairly low maintenance when it comes to this, because their temperature requirements are not anything extreme like some other reptiles. Crested geckos, for most most people do well at room temperature. I keep mine room temperature. I don't have any special heating devices on them or anything, but it is super important that Sorry, my light just kind of burnt out a little bit. <laughs> However, it is super important that you know what your room temperature is because room temperature for different people is different. For example, my reptile room stays around 75 degrees. Fahrenheit. Because my reptile room stays around 75 degrees, that is an acceptable temperature to keep a crested gecko at. However, if your room temperature is 65 degrees, that would be a little bit cold. So while most crested geckos don't need additional heating, it's important that you know the temperature of the room you're keeping that gecko in. I personally would recommend keeping a crested gecko anywhere between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I wouldn't really go over that by much or under that, but if your room that you're keeping your gecko in is usually between 70 and 80 degrees, then your gecko doesn't really need any supplemental heating. However, if you do live somewhere colder, if your house or room tends to be cold, you may want to consider getting something like a ceramic heat emitter or a heat lamp or a deep heat projector. Whatever your options are, you may want to consider that. And now lastly, let's talk about their handling. Crescent geckos are usually fairly easy to handle, which is why, again, I think they are one of the best pet reptiles. Now, every single gecko is going to be different. Some are going to tolerate handling better than others, so some might be super jumpy, some might hate it, but for the most part, this species usually tends to be okay with it. You can see I have had Oliver out here this entire time I've been filming and he's been quite chill and pretty relaxed just sitting on my hand here. So as you can see, some of them don't really mind it at all. However, they can jump. So these guys can actually jump quite far. Oliver, I could hold him quite far away from me. I could hold him like this, I would be here. He could still jump on my face, no problem. He could jump even farther than that. So that is something you should definitely keep in mind. While they are usually fairly good with handling, they can be really jumpy, so just always remember that. I wouldn't recommend handling them somewhere where you could easily lose them. So Crested Geckos would definitely be a top choice for me for one of the best pet reptiles for some of the reasons that I just listed throughout this video. And I'm sure there are more, but I don't want to make this video four hours long. So with all of that said, I am going to go ahead and end the video here. But before I do that, I did just want to remind you guys that this is not meant to be a Crested Gecko care video. This is only meant to be a video talking about why I think they make good pets. This video was not meant to give a bunch of care advice. So with that said, if you are considering getting a Crested Gecko, please do more research on this care. 
please do more research on their care than just watching this video. Please make sure you are looking at multiple sources and everything like that. Don't just use this video as your only source of information, please. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that you do enjoy this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It would mean a ton to me. Also be sure to check out all of my social media if you haven't already. It will all be down in the description below. With that all said, thank you guys again for watching. I really do appreciate it and I will see you all in my next video. Thank you.